Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kaifat Labs. Um, in this video we're going to be talking through the concepts of carrying out a titration. So, um, you know, what's we, we introduced the concept of what titration was all about in the previous video. Now we're going to talk through some of the mechanisms of, of, of how it works. But one of the overriding kind of principles that um, that I really want you to take out of this is that accuracy is key. Let's see if I can do a better wide there. There we go. It's a little bit more appropriate. Okay, so accuracy. Absolutely cannot um, get away from the fact that the, the, the whole purpose of titration, all of everything, the principles are building towards this concept of carrying things out accurately, being able to determine things to us, a large number of significant figures because we're we're using a really accurate method, we're using really accurate equipment, and also our technique is designed around maximizing accuracy. Okay, so let's have a quick look at some of the equipment that we're going to, that we would use. Okay, so you've got some images on the, the kind of page of the booklet in front of you. I'm going to kind of do my poor man sketch um, to kind of fill you in here. Okay, so first we've got this one. This one's called a volumetric flask. So we use a volumetric flask as a way to make up solutions to a known concentration really accurately. Okay, so they measure out one particular volume. They've got a little meniscus kind of drawn, etched across the, um, the neck of the bottle up here that records one volume and one volume only. So unlike a measuring cylinder or, or a beaker or, or anything else like that, you can't accurately record any volume less than or more greater than that particular value. But the idea is that it's, it's constructed accurately to be able to, um, to, to do exactly that really, really well. Okay, um, so then we've got a piece of equipment that looks like this. It's got a little kind of a little tap and then a little point that kind of goes down here and then some markings that go on the side. So this is called a burette. Okay, so that we use a burette for delivering a known volume of solution through the tap into another flask. Okay, so we typically would put a burette attached above a conical flask or a beaker if you're desperate, um, but conical flask is best. Um, and so then by opening and closing this tap, we can deliver or dispense a very specifically known volume of, of the cell, you know, a reactant in here into a container with the other reactant in that. Okay. Um, and so also in the spirit of being able to deliver, you know, known volumes of a solution, we have the one which looks a bit like this. So it's a slight exaggeration. Okay. This bit's not quite as big as that in your diagram or in real life, but this is called a pipette. Okay, so the same sort of deal as with a volumetric flask. It can measure out a, a one volume, one particular volume. So we might have, say, a 25 mil pipette or a 10 mil pipette. Okay, um, and so it's got a little little mark up the top here. So this is called a bulb pipette because it's got this bit in the middle which is big and which is where most of the volume of that, that liquid is kept. Um, so you draw the solution up into the pipette um, using a filler which you attach to the top and then you having filled up your pipette you take it to the place that you want it to go and then you release that solution into it so going into a conical flask or into a volumetric flask or into a beaker um, and so then it dispenses that volume accurately so you notice here that with this that I've said that we have 25.00 mils so it's accurately known that it's not you know 25.0 or just 25 but we can know to four significant figures that that's the level of, you know, that's the specific volume held in that pipette. Okay, so we've got a volumetric flask, we've got a burette, we've got a pipette. Um, okay, let's see what's next. Okay, so we've got Old Faithful, a nice, hopefully a nice kind of obvious one for you, um, our conical flask. Okay, so we use our conical flask um, in combination with our burette um, to hold our two reactants. So we've got a, one reactant in our flask, and we put a particular amount of it using a pipette into here, you know, so it sits at the bottom here. And then we we put the burette and suspend it above the, the conical flask so that then as we release the other reactant from the burette, it goes into the flask and reacts inside here. Okay, so then we've got two more items, okay, that, that you can see from your, your thing. Um, now one, I'm, I'm going to try my best to kind of represent this, but I'm really not going to do it justice. Um, based on what you're kind of seeing there. Okay, so it's kind of, it's got this, it's red, well, 
yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's a cylinder here. You've got a little wheel over the top there and then a little valve. And then it's kind of a little rubber kind of bit in there. Okay, so this is called a pipette filler. Now, you will encounter a number of different types of these in your titration career. Um, at here, here at school, we have a number of different types, including this one. This is probably one that you'll use perhaps slightly more often than the others, but just it will vary. Um, and then, um, yeah, so we attach this to the top of a pipette as a way to help fill up the pipette um, with the solution up to the, the required kind of marking. So you attach it to the top. These ones have a little wheel that you kind of roll, and what that does is that reduces the pressure inside here, which means the atmospheric pressure on the outside is greater and pushes the solution up into that space, into that vacuum at the top. Okay, you get it above the line, and then you, um, there are, with different pipette fillers, there's different techniques, but then you basically will release solution down to where the meniscus sits on that little line, so that the pipette, you know, has that, that volume accurately in there. Okay, and then the last kind of one, again, I'm not going to be able to do a particularly good job here. It's going to look kind of vaguely like a, I don't know, weird wizard or a strange duck or something. This is our wash bottle. Okay, so our wash bottle containing deionized water, DI water, um, that we use for rinsing things down. Okay, so that we can use it to rinse droplets off the burette into the flask. We can use it to um, rinse down the inside of our volumetric flask. For cleaning, we use it for yeah, all sorts of cleaning and kind of washing. Um, and, you know, yeah, and, and if there's any times where we've got droplets that are one place and they need to be pushed to be in another, we can use a wash bottle with deionized water to do so. Okay, so you'll always have one of these on hand when you're carrying out a titration. Okay, so what I'm going to do now just to, to kind of finish up this first video is uh, I'm going to put an image up on the screen which is going to show you um, <coughs> how we set it up. Okay, so you can, I think you can see it there now. So what we do is that we use a retort stand and a burette clamp. Um, we can use a normal boss heading clamp if we're in a pinch, but they're not usually the best idea. Um, so that what we have, so we have on the bottom of the retort stand, we have conical flask, uh, typically with a bit of white paper or white tile underneath it for color contrast. Remember in the previous video, we talked about color change being the key um, kind of factor here, that we want nice contrast to be able to see the color change in our conical flask. So on top of that, so rests our conical flask, and above that attaches our burette. Okay, so the burette is filled up with one reactant. Okay, so um, it has little volume markings on the side that tell you just how much volume has been dispensed from the, the burette as you, after you open the tap. The idea is that you want the reactant in the burette as you open the tap to drain into the conical flask, react with your other reactant um, in there, in the presence of our indicator, and that when the indicator changes colour, that that tells you that you have dispensed enough from the burette. You close the tap and you record the volume that's been dispensed. And that volume, called your um, titration volume or titer, um, also known as, yep, so T I T R E, or titration volume, um, refers to the amount that you dispensed that got to that equivalence point. Okay, or got to that point where the reaction was just complete. Okay, and so then from there, what you can do is knowing the concentration and volume of your known reactant and the volume of your unknown reactant, we can then work out its concentration. Okay, so in a subsequent video, I'll talk you through um, the, the calculation techniques that we use um, and, and exactly kind of once we've got some data, where to from there. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.